back to the Alice in Wonderland podcast. So this is a place for you as my listener or listeners to open your mind and let your sense of wonder, imagination, and especially your curiosity loose. I'm your host, Georgia Alice, and today I'm joined by Peter Dempsey. Now, Peter is a walking, talking miracle. And I have to say that because um, I've actually seen him speak. And he's one of the most engaging, entertaining, and he's totally riveting. And I heard him not long ago and was just blown away by his personal story. And it's a really remarkable story of resilience. And I'm really hoping we're gonna to get to some of that story today because it's truly remarkable, unforgettable, inspiring, and it really helps us think about, well, what's possible for me? If Peter can do what he's done, what's possible for me. So I really want to make sure that our listeners get the most out of Peter. So let's get curious. Welcome, Peter. G'day. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm really good. Thing. I'm super, super pumped to have you on the podcast. So um, thank you. I am well. Good to so, be here. Yeah, yeah, good. Good, good. And now there's a question, Peter, that I always kick off my podcasts with. And this is a question I'd like to pose to you. And mm. the question is, if I was a seven-year-old right now, seven-year-old girl, and I happened to bump into you in the street, in the shops, anywhere, and I start a conversation with you and I say, well, what is it that you do? How would you respond? What's, what's your world like? What do you do? Um, how would I respond? I guess, I guess I basically have fun exploring the world. Ooh, you're the right person for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really do. I, I just like, um, I have fun exploring, um, exploring how uh, different people see the world. Um, uh, I, I explore like different things like um, the, the economics or uh, economics or um, real estate or social, um, uh, social encounters. I love exploring mm -hmm. and I love having fun exploring. Um, and if, if something, um, uh, um, I guess worries me or, or a little bit, um, scares me, right. I love exploring that too. Right. Um, because I, I reckon when you explore something, you, um, you make that more, uh, more certain, right? And when you're certain about it, you're more safer, right? Um, in that very thing. So when I, I, I look at um, exploring as, as just a way of being, really. Yeah, and I love that because you're actually taking a real scientific approach to life. Because if you think of a scientist, a scientist mm. is there exploring possibilities, exploring what could go right, what could go wrong, how does things happen? And they, they explore and they, they come up with these um, methodologies and these, these answers through their explorations. Mm. So tell me, Peter, when, when did this sense of exploration and adventure start? Um, when I was, uh, was a kid, um, I had a, a really big setback. I had a, a stroke, um, which completely uh, knocked out my, my sense of, uh, of communication with, uh, with the external world. Um, and for a long while, I was just, I couldn't communicate with, with anyone. My, my parents understood me, right? understood what I wanted through uh, my emotions or my frustrations. Um, but I couldn't really communicate. So it was just about um, exploring what I had internally right, and using that to explore externally. So um, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it makes sense to me and, and I'm sure it'll make sense to the listeners as well. So can we, can we explore your stroke? 
Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So how old were you when you had your stroke? Uh, I was about four and a half. Four so and a half. Ne- ne- nearly five. And is that a normal thing for a four and a half or five year old? So, so when I think of strokes, I normally think of older people. It's very, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it, I think it's, is it something rare for a child of that age to experience a medical setback like that? Yeah, 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 it, it is um, definitely. Uh, with, with the, there's, there's different um, severities of, of a stroke. Right? And when you have um similar to a stroke before birth um it's uh i think it's called cerebral palsy it has a different name for it um but uh with this uh strokes can last um a few days or a a week or something um but with where i had this had the um the clot uh, in the brain um yeah mine was uh quite severe um so and it's rare like um back then it was extremely rare for um a kid to have a a stroke and survive Mm -hmm. um so the reason why we don't hear more of it is there's no one that survives even even now um and i was lucky enough to to pull through that um and yeah (laughs) As, as a five-year-old pulling through something like that. So what, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get into the head of a five-year-old and it's really quite difficult thinking about well, what's going on because I think I think of myself back there at five. So I'm still developing my sense of identity, the sense of the world, understanding yep. the rules that we live by. That's generally what happens up until that seven years of age and yep. potentially not really knowing what's going on. So... What was it? Can you recall what it was like as a five-year-old to to experience that? Well, um, if you've if you've ever been in a, a, a the surf um, and you get um, tumbled over by um, by waves, right? It felt constantly like that. Oh, that dumped by waves. Dumped, dumped by waves, right? And and keep on going and going and going and going and going, right? It yeah. felt constantly like that. Um, and I, I would get, um, I would get my, my head above water a little bit, like everything would calm down and then it would start again. Um, that's the best uh, way I, I can describe it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah, best way. It's a, it's a really good description. As a child, as a young child, I think before I was 10, I, I remember swimming in the surf down in Waratah Bay near Wilson's Promontory with the, on a family camping trip. And I got dumped mm. by a massive wave and I was held under for quite some time. And that was scary enough. Um, yeah. But you know, I didn't wait, come out of that and have any sort of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the word disabilities, but that sometimes they're not disabilities. But at that time, probably... Mm you're in this stage where I'm assuming where potentially the things you had before the stroke, the abilities you had, had now been taken for you. So what, what sort of things were, did you, were you lose the function of as a five-year-old, four and a half, five-year-old? Um, I pretty much had to, like, I was <laughs> pretty much back to square one. So I had to relearn how to balance um, and that took a, took a really good majority about six months to learn um and understand where my head was right um so and uh then it was yeah walking took about a year um just to gradually walk but if anyone like pushed me if (laughs) um I would just fall over because I, I just couldn't, I didn't have that ability to go, okay, um, I need to put my foot here to, to stop me falling. Um, so I really had to consciously learn every step and every, everything um, again. Mm-hmm. So uh, balance and um, uh, talking, talk and talk at least a, a dozen years um so t- around about 12 years to learn to talk again uh, around around 12 years just to um talk uh with 
um, just to have a, a small conversation. Um, I remember my sister, uh, myself, and my sister driving each other nuts because we used to argue, right? Because my sister would know me and um, offer something, right? And then she would fire back something really quickly, right? And then it would take me minutes right, um, to, to think up of something and then I would say it, but it wouldn't be, wouldn't be like um, it what, um, what I wanted to say, right? Um, so for instance, if, uh, um, and this is when aphasia, right? aphasia is a, a language gap in, in my brain. So if um, I wanted to say like, we're communicating on a computer, I would say um, we're speech, um, uh, TV, yeah. for instance. I couldn't get to the words I wanted. Um, and there's a good analogy my, uh, that my mum uses, right? So the, the brain has a, uh, a memory file of all the words you use, right? It's like a library of all the words you use. Now with aphasia, right, some, um, someone is taking away the books, right, just willy-nilly and throwing them everywhere else, right? So when the librarian comes to get the books, right, to make up a sentence, right, the books aren't there. Someone's right. hidden them. Someone's hidden them, right? So the brain has to work out, like, go through all the, like, all the library trying to find the right word you want to use and then put it in a sentence and then you can say it. Um, wow. And that's, so, that's 12 years. That's a lot of, I'm, I'm going to guess here, practice, consistence, consistency and persistence, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was it was the support I had around me. So my two sisters that were very, very, uh, I guess, word orientated, right? So they would keep firing at me words and my parents were very um, linguistic in, in how they, they, um, they taught me. So it was just the, I was constantly overwhelmed by right, them bombarding me with words, right? So I had to really understand and, and communicate back. Um, so yeah, it was it was really really it was a really tough struggle, but um, and that would drive me nuts. But <laughs> that's <laughs> what family for. Big smile on your face, and you're you're articulating extremely well. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's I'm imagining now, you know, this this library scene of this librarian looking for the books and goes, someone borrowed the book and they haven't put it back yet, and it's like your parents and your sisters are starting to put the shelf put the books back on the shelves for you over time, yeah. so that you've yeah. got that that association all that that neural pathway let's get a bit yeah. scientific here for that that particular word so yeah yeah and it's just about constant repetition repetition so um and over that time i had to relearn how my um how the the, the memory works um and uh relearn how the the emotions right work and and the senses right so i had to regulate my my senses as, as well so um, I remember in early primary school having just complete migraines because I couldn't dull down um, the, the noise. And when I could dull, like I could get a handle on that, my sisters would take up um, tap dancing and, and saxophone and things like that. So that they would constantly, constantly push me, right? And when I got angry at it, right, they would pay, play closer to me. Right, so it was just like a a curse was, and a gift all at once. It was, it was, right? Um, and yeah, it was just a. It was really helpful on me, right? Not at the time, but now I can see, I can look look back on it and say, like, um, I wouldn't be where I am without my sisters and my parents. Yeah, because there's this real ability for us to, like what we do naturally is be able to really focus in and block out the external noises. But if you don't mm. have that ability, I can imagine uh, school and, and being in the fa family situations when there's just so much going on, you can't even, it's like being in one of those really noisy cafes constantly. Mm. Like, yes. seriously, my mind explodes when there's the barista, you know, 
doing the, the coffee and then there's conversation here, a conversation there, music blaring, people eating. And I'm like, that's me in a meeting in a cafe for an hour. So we we're experiencing this in for all the time. All, all the, the time. time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I really had to work out since I was because it was like the noise was completely everywhere. I really had to work out, okay, cool, since I'm not going to control it, right, or get get used to it, how do I control it internally? Right. Yeah. So I've really dug inside and goes like we have to sort this out. I'll, I'll, otherwise, I'm I'm not. Um, um, yeah, I am not going anywhere. So, so what did you what did you do? Because that became a, a skill as opposed to something. It's become a real skill for you to hmm. do that now. So, what was the internal? You know, how did you create that skill? Like, what happened? Can you recall? Um, the the first the um. First thing I've I've worked out well um, over years and years and years of like trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, is um, the the ability to um, just sh- shut off right like as many senses as we can. Right? Um, I mean, closing the eyes um, and hugging yourself right, but putting your hands like under your armpits right, like so um, so you don't have uh, your hands exposed, right? Um, and then, yeah, right. And then clo- closing down, and then um, just focusing on the on the breath, right? Mm. And eventually, I got I got used to just doing that. Um, and then it's like, okay, since I'm used to that now, right? Let's expose myself to more and more and more situations right trying to push um that that sense of uh that sense of um overwhelm right and let's try and get it as far away from us as possible right while standing on the edge right and so when we go back we're 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 balanced but it's that 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 overwhelm is as far away from us as we can yeah they're really powerful life skills, Peter. Like people could use those skills right now to understand because look at the, the world as it is now. We're constantly bombarded social media. We're constantly bombarded with, uh, with news and all these things in our external environment. And a lot of people, especially my clients, they have this, this sense of overwhelm. There's just so much to do. So you mm-hmm. have created a really nice, maybe even a patentable um, technique for people to just shut down from that overwhelm. And I like what you said there about removing yourself as much of the sensory stimulation mm. away from mm. yourself so that it allows, it allows you to go inwards and really, I, I guess, refocus. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, because it doesn't matter what's happening externally, it matters on what's happening internally. All right. So um, if you're internal world is completely blown blown around right um and you're constantly uh, overwhelmed or or drowning right um and externally you you've been like i'm cool i'm fine i'm i'm hip right um i've got a really good job and i've got this and got that right i'm all good right but internally you're drowning right that that is um cognitive dissonance right and that cognitive dissonance will will lead to cognitive stress or overload and eventually that leads to um all types of health issues so just by um understanding how um to close off or close as much off from the senses as you can uh, um will help uh with with everything else because that that allows you a little bit of, of room to move and go okay let's fix this yeah. And so by doing that, you, you start to create a new story for yourself for the external. So, yeah. you know, I'm in a sense of overwhelmed, but I'm telling everyone I'm okay. But if I just shut down, shut down what's going on outside, go inside and start creating a new story. And it's like what you've done. You, as a, you know, four and a half, five-year-old have created a whole new story for your life through re, reprogramming the brain and how it works. Hmm. Hmm. So you and- Sorry. No, that's all right. Keep going. Yeah. Um. With with um. Um. 
this was when like, uh, I had the, the stroke when neuroplasticity wasn't around, right? So every, every single doctor um, or, or that would say, like, oh, he's, he's like, he can't do this. He's, da -da -da, he's hopeless. Um, you're better off sitting down on the chair and right, things like that. Um, although when I could do something I, I didn't used to do, um, we would go back to the doctors and say, how come I did it? Right. My parents would um, be a, a constant advocate for me to say like, what is he doing? Like, that is different from everyone else. And their um, feedback would be, oh, he's different to everybody else. He's unique. It's like no one does that. And this used to, um, when I did understand it, uh, uh, I was going to swear then. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it used to annoy me a lot. Um, you can swear. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> uh, if you need to. <laughs> it, 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 it used to like drive me nuts. Absolutely nuts. Um, but what, what I, I found was uh, it's, yeah, it's just about reprogramming the, the mind to say like, if it's, something's not serving you right find out a way how right or be comfortable with that and then find other people who are doing it right and try and surround yourself with people who are doing that so with with my sisters classic example um i really wanted to understand my senses right and my senses my sisters were all the time around me just playing trumpet or saxophone or talking and like overloading me right it used to drive me completely nuts um, and then I got used to it and then I used to push the bar further and further and further. Right. And so I understood what, like, uh, eventually what they were doing. Right. Um, and it took me like a good 15 years to understand what they were doing and they didn't know that they, they just wanted me to be, um, uh, to like, they just want to be annoying. <laughs> As sisters and brothers are, you know, was, when we're young, we just want to annoy each other, but they're actually doing you a huge favour by annoying you without even knowing it. Exactly. Exactly, right? Um, and my, my sisters now, like, um, are, are really close. Like, me and, my, me and my sisters are really, really close. Um, and my sister's a, a speech pathologist uh, specialising in voice. And my other sister's... Um, uh, going into play-based therapy right? um, with uh, and the head of a Starlight Foundation, I think. Mm -hmm. It's it's some, some foundation helping out our, our kids. Um, and so we, we've all um, got a, a sense of, like, let's help each other out um, to, to grow. And, um, yeah, so... But, I'd, like, people... I find now um, I, I see a lot of people just getting annoyed by it and retracting themselves, right? It's like, okay, right, the, you should do the opposite, right? You should right, go into it further and further and further, get overwhelmed, right? Because that overwhelm is just a, a neural, like your, your neurons are going berserk, right, with that, that overwhelm. And when you stay there for long enough, adjust and cope with that that pressure um as long as it's as long as it's safe in in you and as long as you know when to when to pull out and when to um push forward again so um and that's that's the same thing with me when i i got too overwhelmed i would completely collapse and sleep um and then i would wake up again and do the same thing yeah right and then I would collapse and then I would wake up again and do the same thing. So um, it's, it's very similar to what, what we hear about people about facing the fears, you know, the cave you fear. There's a, a, a quote by Joseph Campbell that says the, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. So for you, it's like, okay, there's all this overwhelm. I don't like the overwhelm, but if I go into this cave of overwhelm, the treasure for me is I will then be able to deal with that overwhelm. I'm going to be, it's going to become familiar. The brain's going to create neural networks and pathways for it. So therefore it's not overwhelm anymore. Mm. I like mm. what you say there too, about being able to 
really listen to yourself and know when you need to step out of it too, because, you know, you can be in a state of overwhelm for, for way too long. And sometimes yeah. it can lead it can lead to stress, and it's like facing facing your facing your fears, getting in there, and just because once you become familiar with something, it's no longer overwhelm and it's no longer fear. It's just the normal, and your brain's now adapted because we're very adaptive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, with with like um the people who stay there for too long, right? Um, yeah, like the the body has a really really um good way of protecting you. Right, so if it has to harden up, right, to protect you, right, it will do that. Um, and if it has to become stressed to like or um, angry to help you, right, it will do that, right. And uh, one of the things I, I keep pushing, uh, I keep um, exploring with people is don't lose that that fun cheeky sense that you that everyone has of of um of play of exploring because when it when you get angry or stressed in an overwhelming situation right you just like it's tunnel vision right and you're not um you're not well you're not moving with with that overwhelm you're you're really um you're fixed right and um and if you're fixed when uh I was talking about earlier about that wave. Um, you're you're in a barrel roll, and if you're fixed, right, you'll get more you'll get more damaged. Yeah. Right? Just going with the flow, right, and moving with it, um, you're still stuck in it, but you're moving. Uh, you're flexible in how you how you go go through it. So, so adopting a, a sense of childlike wonder when you're in, in that state of overwhelm and noticing it, paying attention to the things that are overwhelming you and being curious and adventurous and, and, and you know, exploring why that is making you feel overwhelmed instead of just sitting there and copying it like you're being, you're being beaten, basically. You're just, yeah. just there and just taking it all on, which it causes more stress. But if you step yeah. into it with a, a sense of wonder, a sense of exploration, curiosity, well then, uh, it's different, isn't it? It's a different experience. Yeah, yeah, you, and uh, two or three people might have the same, like the the same external stimulus, right? But interpret it three different ways. Mm. Um, and I always look for the 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 perspective right or i always look for the way that will give me more learnings right will help me grow right um and will will allow me to ask more questions right about how do i do this right who do i have to connect with um because i, I love meeting people now um and so which which one would allow me more flexibility right because that's normally the one um, that is the, the best one to go with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that real, sense, real sense of exploration in, in going. And you're right. People go, I've noticed this with people, especially clients and people I've worked with in the workshops and programs I do, as they start to learn how to change perspective. So going into a situation with a different perspective actually makes the whole situation completely different. So it's not... The situation is actually the same. It's the story you tell yourself about a situation. So if there's someone that's let you down, you can you can look at that from a point a point of view of they've, I've been let down, or you can look at it a point of view of oh, I wonder what's going on in that person's life that they mm. had to let me down. Mm. I'm mm. curious. You become compassionate. Yeah. Now I want to. There was something you said then that I'm going to unpack with you hopefully because you said sure. you know I really love being around and meeting people, and you said after that now so was there a point in your life where it wasn't nice and it wasn't fun or you didn't like being and meeting people so mm, I, want to, mm. I want to hear the flip side what's the flip side of that comment <laughs> um yeah yeah there, there was a there was a time when i i was too worn out right to to meet people right to um hear hear their story right um uh, i was I was trying to com like to almost compare myself with everyone else, right? And so I saw everyone else doing something. I wanted to do it too. I tried to the best of my abilities to do it. Um, 
and I got I got used to like c- comparing myself, and with um, this, I I understood my abilities right, and I understood theirs right, but I still wanted that challenge of pushing myself right to to um, keep keep up right or um, and for me, it was a it was a good thing, right? To to compare myself with other people, um, I didn't take it as a, a negative thing, right? I just said like, okay, I'm down, I, I'm here, they're there. I want to improve and keep improving. Um, and eventually, when um, I I became the best at something, right? I would almost. Uh, um, self sabotage right to to improve improve the um improve my abilities right so and i was just too tired of of doing that so i didn't want to meet anybody else (laughs) so it's really interesting how you said uh, you've got a really high level of self-awareness so self-awareness is knowing what's going on so you knew that you were self-sabotaging but you continue to push through that through the self-sabotage to get to to close the gap of who you were and the person you wanted to become whatever that might be so you're you're taking yeah. you're taking i guess license from people around you'll go oh i like that skill about them or i like that they can do that and you're now creating this this peter dempsey that's in front of yeah. you yeah, yeah, yeah. and of course you're going to self-sabotage along the way aren't you i'm not good enough <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, like, um, yeah, with, with that, like, I, I'm not good enough, right, comment. Right? Um, and uh, I hear us, so many people going, like, I'm not good enough, I'm not successful enough, I'm not this, I'm not that, right? Um, and I just, I just think of it as this one little single thought, right? Like, I'm not good enough, right? And if you attach to that thought, right, all the emotion, right, then it's suddenly a bigger thought, right, which you have to, like, have, have to deal with. I just think of that as, like, one little single thought because you have, um, I think, um, the average is now about seventy to 80,000 thoughts a day, right? And that's just one thought, right? You have, like, 79 thousand nine hundred ninety nine other thoughts right which you can latch like meaning onto right which are, are better than that one thought um so and with the so that that's what that's what i i focus on i was like okay cool that's one thought i'll i'll, I'll forget about it in like a few seconds when i i keep focusing on what i want to do yeah um and with self-sabotage, right, um, if you have self-sabotage in a positive way, so if you consciously, almost consciously self-sabotage yourself, right, you can become better. Um, a good example of this is I had a, um, uh, a, a basketball playing mate, mate of mine, right, and he really wanted to get in the state level of basketball. Um, and this was about a few years back, but I said, I said to him, um, put an eye patch on like one eye and do the same thing. Right. So you're sabotaging your eyesight, right. And you're still playing basketball. And what he noticed was it was a lot harder for him to, to play the same level of basketball. Um, and that is just, it's consciously self-sabotaging yourself, but it's doing it in a controlled way, which when you take the eye patch off will help you, right? Because it does, it, um, it helps the neurons go, okay, all right, fire like this or, or things like that. So it's improving all your senses right, just that little bit further to, um, to help with your overall game. I love that. I've never heard of people doing that before, but from what I know around how the mind, the brain works, that, this positive self-sabotage, you know, because then you're yeah. strengthening other parts, other, you're strengthening, you're forcing your brain to work a little harder so that you can get to where you want. It's like um, one of my mentors, he encourages people to start writing with their non-dominant hand. 
Exactly, exactly, so right. And you start doing that, you're self-sabotaging because really your writing's going to look crap, but, yeah. but you're actually strengthening your ability to become ambidextrous. Exactly, exactly, right. And exactly the same thing, right? If you're, uh, if you're really, really good at one thing, um, um, if you're really good at one thing and you want to get better, I mean, like my, Michael Jordan, for instance, I, like, I'm like, oh, I, could, I could make him, like, him 10 times better, right? Like, um, yeah, just, just by following this, right? It's like going, okay, cool, close both eyes, right? And, and try and feel the, the court, feel the ball, right? Um, and then, yeah, right, there, there's different ways to, to explore that, um, that positive self-sabotage. Um, I, I have to find a better name for it because, yeah. Um, but that, that's what I, I, I do, right? And, um, and yeah, that's, I, I just helped out my friend and he got in the, the state levels and um, it was actually really cool. <laughs> so... Yeah. yeah, I love that, and I, I can just imagine. I, I'm, I've got a picture now of Michael Jordan on the on the basketball course, blindfolded, and you, you're so true. What will happen is his extra uh, perception, his extra sensory perception, would get stronger. So therefore, when mm. he's on the basketball course, he won't even need to look at the the hoop to shoot yeah, yeah, because yeah. he'll know where it is with his um, extra senses, which which we all have, and yeah. because we we rely on our our eyesight, our smell, our, all these other senses, we're relying on them. We're not allowing others to be strengthened. Um, exactly. So if you exactly. think of a blind person, they have really, because they don't have that, the brain has created a, a really strong extrasensory perception. So mm, mm, mm. you've given me exactly. some things to think about, Peter. This has been a very, a very informative podcast with you. And I, I hope our listeners are, are listening in and going, hmm, here's some way I can, I can start to strengthen myself through... Yeah, I don't, I don't want, yeah, self-sabotage, positive self-sabotage. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it needs a better name, right? But I've just been like um, uh, helping friends and, and things like that. Um, and yeah, just just anyone I meet, just like, yeah. But yeah. Um, just help strengthening the mind in how it likes to, likes to learn. Not you, you like to learn, just how your mind likes to learn. That's uh, a really good way of um, growing you right, and growing right, who you want to you want to become because um, you are always changing, right? Like you are not the same person as you were yesterday, right? Just by all the the sensory input, right? Um, and you by understanding that and looking at um, exploring if you're going down uh, the road you or the, the pathway you, you love and you enjoy, um, that will ultimately help you get to where you want to go. So, mm -hmm. and it's just a, it's just a journey and to have fun along the way. I like that having fun along the way. Yeah. That's what I, I we've, I think we've become a little bit too serious in life. Some, some people. So yeah, you're <laughs> sitting, those, those are going to listen and can't see you right now. I'm going to describe Peter has got this amazing big smile on his face. He's got <laughs> in his eyes. Um, so you can tell that he likes to have a little bit of fun in his life. And I'm, I know based on your story that it hasn't always been fun. Right. So I know, I know yeah. that you spent a lot of time, especially in your school years where life wasn't so, so fun for you. Do you want to spend a few minutes talking, just sharing what that was like for you? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was... I, the, um, I, was, I was bullied right, as, a, as a kid. Um, it, that, that wasn't fun at all. Um, and uh, since I, I had trouble running and... and um, and talking and articulating myself, uh, I, I re really got, um, it, I felt at the time I was a cheap shot. Um, but uh, looking back on it now, it just, got, it just got me used to that amount of um, overwhelm and that amount of pressure. All right? So I can look into other areas of life now right and go okay cool i'm used to that much pressure and overwhelm right so i really can go um anywhere uh, i want right and feel okay 
Um, and this is how, when I was working with um, uh, children or um, children with um, severe um, family issues or, or things like that, just I really resonated resonate resonated with them, um, just because I could understand and. Um, I think kids really, really know, right, if you're bullshitting or if you're not. Right? They've got really good so, truth detectors, haven't they? They, they do, they do. And then they're not, they're not afraid to express it, right? Say so like, oh, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> um, but but with, with, yeah, with kids, with adults, um, we just all have a unique, um, I guess, wisdom internally that, that says like, okay, cool they can really understand me and these guys can't, right? Mm -hmm. And if we could label that, right, and um, we, we would have a field day with that. But, um, and this is about ex just exploring right, how the, the mind likes to work um, because it, it's in there, right? We just have to find it. Yeah. So. Uh, something you said there, which is really great, because I know, I know from your story that you, you mentioned um, when, I, when I heard you speak, you, you endured, I'm going to say endured because it wasn't suffered, you, you endured around about 10 years of bullying. That's a lot, lot of bullying. Yeah. And listening to you right now, you're sitting there and you're almost, you, in a way you're saying, you know, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Now, we're not condoning bullying, but what's happened is you have been able to look back and there's a term called a refractory period. So a refractory period is how long you take from an, a, a terrible event to be able to look back at it with knowledge and wisdom. Mm. So you're, you're now, you've got this refractory period where you can look back at that and you can see the good in it. And for our listeners, I want you to pay really close attention to what, what Peter's saying here because you will find if you're a listener and you've had someone who's done something wrong to you, it might be as someone's cheated on you or someone owes you money or um, someone said something bad on you or dissed you on social media, whatever it is, <laughs> if you're still holding on to that today. You are extending this refractory period and you're, you're not allowing the learning and the wisdom to unfold from it. And hmm. you're a really good ex example of, yeah, yeah, I went through some, some shit at school, but look at me now. I've learned from it. I'm sitting here, I've got a huge smile on my face, twinkle in my eye, and I get how the mind works. I'm understanding human potential because you're talking about this innate wisdom within all of us. And one of the things I know you love to do is to really help people access their true potential. So, hmm. so in saying that, is that what you like to help people really see that there's, what is true potential for you? I'm gonna ask you the question. True, true potential is um, what people love doing uh, um, and to be okay with whatever they love doing uh, um, and help them, um, I guess, be okay with, with that. Right? And I mean, there, there is so much power uh, um, in, in doing that because if you're doing what you love, uh, um, and like everything just comes to you uh, eventually, um, and it doesn't matter if you get um, you get pushed off, right? Pushed off balance, right? You can you can regain it and keep moving forward, um, and you actually get get to where you want to go a lot faster, right? Because you're since you love what you're doing, your mind um, loves loves it, so it constantly thinks about it. Um, you're not as, as pushed off track. Um, so a lot of things out now is like, find your purpose, find your purpose. Right. Um, I'm like, you need to follow your purpose right? or you need to follow what you're good at. Um, and because like, <laughs> it sucks if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, it's so true. And I love what you're saying there. It's you actually said something really quite profound and I'm, I don't know if you realise you said it. You know, you're talking about people saying that find your purpose, find your purpose, but you said it a really simple word. You said, follow your purpose. It's like, you don't have to find it. It's already within you. Yeah. yeah. There's this level within you that knows what you love doing. There's something within you 
that really understand this is for our listeners there's something within you you know you want to do but you haven't given yourself permission to go after that and yeah yeah so you're you are you're a really great advocate and also a really great example of doing that yeah and 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 it is like um like with whatever you find like um uh uh, I wouldn't say fun because it can be challenging as well, but there there is a um, uh, a way of of being which is is fun, explorative, right? And it is following it, right? Like, and if you keep like if you move a little bit in that direction, right? Um, say you're in a job you hate, right? Because let's let's face it, like ninety percent of people are in a job they hate. Poor people. Right? <laughs> um. Well, that, that's just a way of like, um, that's just a set way of, of living it, of being. Um, and I mean, if you're spending like eight or nine hours a day stressing, right, because you hate this job, right, because you want to please other, other people or want to like help you out your family or things like that, it's just about um, exploring that and going like, what, like, what has led you, led you into this position? And if you're really open with your family and with yourself, right, you're going, okay, I don't want like to live a job that I don't like because living a job you like, don't like changes your world, changes you into that's something you don't like. So it's cognitive dissonance right there. But if you follow, like if you step out of it, right, um, and go towards the something you love, and um, you explore that right, and keep, keep going down that way, there will be things that open up. There'll be people you meet, there'll be like, and they will just gravitate to, to your energy because you're, you're following this thing you love, right? And you'll just pick up momentum naturally. Um, and when you pick up momentum naturally, you, um, you love, um, you're connecting and things will, will blossom into, um, uh, and, and ex- extraordinary rate. So, um, and that, that's what I'm, I'm doing now. I'm like with, with talking and, and speaking, uh, it was really, really hard to do, right? But all like um, what I really wanted to do is be like Eminem, right? Like rapper right? kind of thing, right? I'm like- oh, I didn't know oh. that. <laughs> Well, it, can, it, you it's just like, can you give us a rap? Can you give us a <laughs> No, no, no. I, um, but it's just like a, because I, I really, like um, with the, the bully at school, right, he was really switched on with his words, right? So no one could in, insult him because he would have a really quick, smart-ass remark, right? And he would just, right? I'm like, that's not fair. <laughs> it takes me like, it takes me minutes, right? Or it, it took me sometimes days to, to think up of this one sentence and practice it or rehearse it. Right. And then uh, I would, I would say it, say it to like, um, he would say something and I would say it back, like something back to him. Right. And then he would, he would constantly like th- throw back three or four times as much. I was like, come on, give me a break here. <laughs> And then, then at home, right, my, my, my sisters would constantly be, be bombarding me, right? I'm like, ah. so this is what um, it really was, uh, was frustrating me to such an extent. I, I, like, I, I wanted to steer in that direction because um, what I was saying before about um, you're constantly on that overwhelm, right? And then you pull back and then constantly on that overwhelm, pull back. And this is how naturally I I got into speaking because speaking was uh, my biggest vulnerability, right? Um, I guess um, I I had, and that this is, that's why I I steered towards it um, to better understand my articulation. And it just so happens I've, I come across a, um, a speaking coach, a five, um, and he taught me how to articulate myself again and, and control my voice and things like that. And one thing led to another. So this is where I am today. Yeah, absolutely. And so 
I'm going to finish up here because I just think I love what you've just said there and it's a shame we can't get you to do an M&M impersonation, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> next time, right? Um, but I can understand, I can totally understand why that dream would be there as a, as a I'm, I'm guessing, a teenage boy because, you know, M&M yeah. was able to come up with these rhymes really quickly and just, you know, come back at it. Why can't I do that? So, yeah. Yeah, 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 e exactly. And um, that's, what, that's what really impressed me about him. Right. And um, to have that as a as a goal, right, um, or something, anything I, I I would like to to be like, um, and to really uh, hear it and understand it, um, is yeah, it's just a goal, and it's about enjoying the journey, right, as well. It's not about focusing on that and going, I will only be happy if I get there. It's about um, small little wins. And when I was back in school or like with my sisters, um, if I would, if I had a, a can't or a, an explanation um, in a few seconds less, right? I would reward myself, right? Yes, I did that. Even though I got bombarded, <laughs> I did that. You always uh, found the good. You always found the good in the situation, the win. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's like if if you like even if it's micro doses of what's good, right? Um, in your whole day, if it's micro doses, right, you still focus on that. So, so if you were to leave our listeners with a, a, either a word of advice, a message, or something, what would be what would you like to leave our listeners with? What's something that you think you'd like them to take away from our conversation today, or something we may not have covered? That you think would be really helpful for our for our listeners to to really tap into their true potential because that's what your that's basically your mission is to help people do that. So, what would be a final word, sentence, paragraph, whatever? You um. Think. Okay. A lot of people say um, you're your biggest critic, right? And. I would like to flip that over on its head and, and say, if you're your biggest supporter uh, um, and help yourself, um, then a lot more people will guide you, help you. Uh, um, a lot more people will, will help you because they just like that, like that encouragement of yourself. Um, and if you do that, if you flip that inner critic, uh, because that inner critic wants to help you out, um, um, when you when you dig into the crux of it, um, if you flip that around and, and it's and you show your your inner critic how to support you, right? Your you you will be your biggest supporter, and the whole world will open up for you. Thank you, Peter. That is such beautiful, wise words. I don't need to add anything to that. That is just, yeah, it's really great, great tips and tools. So if people would like to get in touch with you, follow you on social media, book you for a talk. And by the way, people, we didn't touch anything very, we, we sort of skimmed the surface of, of, um, of Peter's. He has a, a wonderful talk called A Stroke of Genius, which I highly encourage you if you're in a workplace or if you are in a school or anything like that, that you know, you, you'd want to get Peter down there to, to talk about his journey because it's a really amazing journey. So Peter, how can people get, what's the best way for people to get hold of you, follow you, get in contact with you? Sure, sure. It's um, peterdempsey.com or um, just uh, reach out to me on Facebook, uh, Peter Dempsey. Um, and... Uh, yeah, or, or Instagram, the Peter Dempsey, but yeah, it's, um, yeah. I, I will put the, the, the links to these in our show notes. So anyone that wants to get hold of him, and I highly recommend you do, um, go and have a look at the things that he's doing, check out his website, have a look at his social media posts and yeah, get involved and, and follow this amazing man who um, has a wealth of wisdom. And I only think we've scratched a little bit of the surface on it here today. So, you know, I'm totally blown away with the, the things you've been able to talk about with us today and the level of wisdom and expertise that you've been able to share. So 
the future is very, very bright for Peter Dempsey and um, you might want to get a hold of him really quickly because I can imagine he's going to be booked up very quickly <laughs> for a period of time. <laughs> Absolutely. With that energy, that's just how it rolls, right? The snowball's getting bigger. Momentum that's it. Up. That's yep, it. That's it. Now. So thank you so much for jumping on board the Alice in Wonderland podcast. It's been an absolute delight to have you here. And thank you very much for having me. I don't know about you, but I totally enjoyed and loved chatting with Peter Dempsey. And, you know, we, we think about there's that, that metaphor of diamonds are created under pressure and what a wonderful example of that actually happening. So Peter, you know, we didn't cover a lot of his story, his actual story, but, you know, there was a lot that went on and a lot of struggle and challenges of very, as a young child and a teenager that led him to have just an amazing amount of wisdom and uh, expertise in, in change. So if you, I seriously want to make sure that if you are looking for somebody to, to speak at an event or somebody to, to talk to about change and to share his experience, whether you are in a school, whether you, whether you work in an organization or a community group or a sporting group, and you want to be inspired and you want to be in mo motivated to really understand the, the true potential that we have within us and the power of our mind to be able to change the circumstances in our life. Peter is your man. Uh, I totally loved this episode. So if you liked it as well, please leave a comment, hit a like, whatever platform you're listening to, um, leave a review. I'd love to hear from you, to hear what you're thinking about the Alice in Wonderland podcast. We have some great, uh, some great episodes coming up for you as well. But um, yeah, let me know how you're feeling. And if you missed any of our podcasts, make sure that you check out the Blue Chip Minds website and the Alice in Wonderland page. And you can check out any of the episodes that you may have missed up until now because I am meeting the most extraordinary people who are walking around just looking like ordinary human beings that are making an amazing difference in this world. Let's meet more of these people. So thank you so much for dropping by and coming down the rabbit hole with me again today. It's been an absolute pleasure to bring Peter into your world. Have a wonderful day and remember, stay curious. Today is turning into the most curious adventure I've ever had.